Welcome back to the Live Elevated Podcast. I'm super stoked to get into this episode. I It's a Monday morning. I, um, I didn't sleep much at all last night, <laughs> so if I don't make sense, we'll blame it on the sleep deprivation. But uh, I want to talk about motivation, and I want to talk about uh, desire, why we do what we do. Um, what's the motivation? What is the um, the reason? You know, why we do the things we do, why we chase success and what success even means. Um, you know, obviously there's different ways to define success and there's different ways to define everything. But my point being, you know, if we look around in the world around us, um, if we look around at the people or culture um, around us, you know, I think the big popular things that drive people are what? You know, it's money, it's fame, it's meaning, it's purpose, um, recognition. You know, these are sometimes words describing the same thing, but in a different way. But my point being, you know, I think for a lot of people, if you listen to this podcast, you're obviously on this journey of becoming more you and becoming the most you. It's about maximizing everything you are. And when I say becoming more you, I'm saying just that. Like, it's you on this journey of maximizing everything you are. Everything God made you to be, you are becoming exactly that person. You know, you're being that person, becoming more that person. And so that's very different than what I think is common. It's very common to do things um, for the fame, do things for the money, the fame and fortune, do things for the self. Um, and so it just becomes about me, 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 and the world uh, becomes very small. But I would you know, invite us into this idea that if we think the world's all about us, then obviously we are limiting our options drastically. You know, we're limiting our potential to just the self, which is not very profound. It's not very um, powerful. But if we can get beyond ourselves and realize that there's a bigger motivation, there's a bigger purpose for our life, there's a bigger reason why we should pursue our potential, you know, reach towards um, our, our limits and go beyond them. So when the world and most people, myself included, and I think this is the journey is like, you know, dropping or letting go of this need to get the fame or get the money, um, or be quote unquote successful in the eyes of other people. It's dropping that mentality and understanding that the, the purest and most powerful potent form of of motivation that you and I have is love. It's love. Love is the reason why we're here. Love is the purpose of our lives. And so whether you're trying to get a six pack, you're trying to lose 50 pounds of body fat, trying to look and feel better, you're trying to be successful with your business, whatever you're trying to do, what I'm saying in this episode is I've seen the firsthand effects of, of switching from being motivated by the common things, money, fame, fortune, notoriety, uh, respect, and switching from that to love and how powerful it can be. When I say this, I mean, man, love, love for God, number one. Love for God, the ultimate good the perpetual present, the eternal now. <laughs> I didn't make that up. I wish I did, but it's Tim Mackey at the Bible Project. But it's love for God. Everything that is, everything that was, is, and will be comes from God. And I believe this whole universe was made out of love and for love and by love and through love. And so... Why should it be different? Why should we be ultimately motivated by money? How how silly. You know, and people, we need money. I'm not saying it's a silly thing like that, but I'm saying, you know, true success is not more money. True success is more love in your life and becoming more you. 
if you're on track and you are becoming more you, you're you're already a success. You're you're already successfully being you, the person God made you to be, and becoming more, growing into that person. And that's that's really what success is. So I'm inviting you and myself. I'm trying to remind us together that we are connected. We are connected by love. We're connected by God. And so out of this love for God, the highest good for yourself and humanity, that's what drives you to wake up in the morning and become more you, to do the stuff you may, you may not like and enjoy doing. But you know it's out of love for the highest good, you know, God. And that's a powerful motivation. But it's not just that, man. It's love for yourself. And people kind of, you know, maybe in the past too, I've, I've been like, whoa, you're not supposed to love, you know, what do you mean love yourself? Like love your neighbor, you know, like don't think about yourself, right? And so this is a bit, it's a bit complicated because I do think there's so much freedom in the forgetfulness of self. There, there is the, the element to that. It's a Tim Keller book, by the way. If you haven't read it, check it out. Highly recommend. It's very short. You can finish it in a weekend, but you have to internalize it over some months, if that makes sense. <laughs> but but it, there is freedom in like losing yourself in God, in others, right? In the moment. You forget the self, the self that is... Uh, you know, limited, the self that's selfish, the self that wants this and doesn't want that or prefers this and doesn't like that, feels this. You know, there is that element of getting beyond that, and I think that's powerful. But you have to have love for yourself. You have to take care of yourself like you actually love and respect yourself, like you are someone worthy of love and respect because you are. I am. You are. The person you see next to you, the people on the road as you drive, everybody you know, people in the grocery store. Everybody is worthy of love and respect as a human being. And the more we can let that idea permeate our entire lives, the better off we are, the more life we can experience, the more heaven on earth. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing, right? So it's love for God, not only that, but it's love for yourself, and then it's love for others. You know, it's not maybe in a specific order from there, but I'm saying like, when, when Jesus says, hey, love your enemies, you know, and love your neighbor as yourself, he implies that, man, you, you, you got to treat other people, love other people the way you love yourself, you know? Um, this is assuming you take care of yourself, you love yourself, which, which what does love mean? It means wishing, wanting, pursuing, doing everything possible in your own power for the good, the ultimate and highest good of that other person, of the object of your love. So love others and love yourself, man. Love others, love yourself. Love God, love yourself, love others. You know, I think that's one of the one of the probably the the negative things of growing up in church for me was that denial. It, it was so much denial of self. And again, there is that element to it. But it's also like, man, like it's like the even the Christian life because I know people listening aren't just Christians. Some people don't believe in God. Some people are on this journey and from a different background and whatnot. Um, some people are wrestling with the faith of their childhood and growing into and figuring out, hey, what you know, what do I believe? You know, I'm respectful and I want to be mindful of all that. Um, but it's like, yeah, self denial is is you know, you lose your sense of self because you give up your right to uh, own anything. <laughs> And you say to live is Christ and to die is gain. To live is Christ, so it's not me living, but Christ through me. And so that's the self denial that we're we're called into or invited into. But the coolest part about that is there's ultimate freedom in that because you lose yourself in love, and um, you cease to see yourself as separate from other people. So I digress. I want to wrap up here, keep it short. But it's uh, then it's love for for others, right? Love for future. So love for God, love for yourself. Love for others and love for your future. Man, you know, I'll make it a part of my story. When I want to stay fit, when I think about working out, feeling my best, um, pursuing my potential, building businesses, working hard, making an impact in the world, creating stuff that I love and I value and I think I was put on earth to do, it comes back to, man, I want to create a life, excuse me, a life for my my daughter Gianna and our future children and my wife Gigi. It's out of love for them and love for our future. 
So it's like, yeah, do what needs to be done today. Do the very best with what you got today to be set up for success in the future. You know, your, your, your future self will thank you for doing even the smallest thing today. You know, so what does that look like for you? What do you need to do? You know, what have you been putting off? What are you avoiding that you know deep down is something that's going to make your life better, going to help prosper you um, and, uh, and set you up for more life, more success, more, more fulfillment in the future, right? So at the end of the day, when you see society, culture, even maybe who you are right now, thinking the fame, the money, the vacations, the houses, the yachts, the planes, these aren't bad things in and of themselves. But when you look to those things as the ultimate motivation, just like a six pack in fitness, the reality is it will leave you feeling wanting. The reality is when you accomplish that, when it manifests in your life, when you actually experience the fulfillment of a dream like that, you'll be on the yacht and you'll think, man, there's got to be something more. You'll have all the money. You'll be on the vacation. And then you'll be like, man, there's got to be something more. And that is what we're talking about right here, my friend. So don't forget, always remember that love is your ultimate source of motivation. You are a vehicle, right, that needs gasoline. Cars need gasoline. And the gasoline, the purest, most highest and efficient gas for your vehicle, your life, is love. Love for God, love for yourself, love for others, love for your future. And if we stay there, man, we will change the world. And when I say we will change the world, I mean God will change the world through us. That's why we're here. That's why we're still here. We are made to become more us and to impact the world for good. So that's the podcast. That's the episode. Remember, love is your ultimate motivation. So let's keep on getting in tune, staying in, staying in rhythm with that love for God, for ourselves, for others, for our future, and stay there. Remind yourself of that. People need you. Your future needs you. God wants you. He's inviting you consistently into this life of stepping more into faith, hope, trust, love, action, reflection, meditation, contemplation, right? This is the life you are being called into. I know I am. <laughs> but thank you for listening. Thank you for supporting the channel. Uh, share this episode with a friend or family member if it impacted you. Um, tell them that you love them through this episode and remind them that they, uh, they can fight their demons. They can climb their mountain. They can break through the glass ceiling. They can be a, a, um, a chain breaker in their family tree. They will flip the script because they finally are grasping. They're, they're grasping and understanding more and more that the truest, most purest, most pure and efficient gas fuel for their success every day is love. All right. I love you. Thanks for listening. And I appreciate the support. Until next time, you're made to stay um, fit for life and you're made to live elevated you know this all right that's it that's a wrap peace love thanks Ooh.